I should probably have taken photos first, right? And today I'm gonna to be doing something completely random. I'm well aware, but first I'm gonna acknowledge all of you guys who might have noticed I have been sorta of AWOL for a while, and that's because my life has been sorta of chaotic, and I'm just holding it together. Barely. But you know what's gonna help? Cake. Yes, cake. Because I want cake. There's really no other <laughs> reason, but I'm using Animal Crossing as my excuse to do just that because there was a new update and with it came a whole bunch of fun stuff, such as Sanrio characters and new custom design spots. In fact, there are 50 of them. There's actually a lot. If you're interested to know what else there is, just go check it out online. But while you're there, take a gander at the one year anniversary cake because today I'm gonna be making that cake to celebrate one year of playing Animal Crossing. And it looks like this. Now you see why I've chosen it? It is oh so cute and oh so simple, which seems as good an excuse as any to eat some cake. But first we gotta make it. So I'm gonna go upstairs and grab all the things I need to make said cake, and then we can get started. Cause all the lights are down here and stuff, it makes sense, I promise. Yeah. So I'm gonna start with my golden cake mix and I'm gonna be making two of these. Nothing too special happening here. I'm literally just gonna follow the instructions on the box, but I am gonna sub in where it says either one cup of water or milk and do half of each. Of course, using bag milk because Canada. Once all the ingredients are in, I'm gonna add it to my stand mixer and then let it go at a nice low speed for two minutes. Then I'll stop it, scrape down the sides, and let it go again just a little longer to make sure everything is incorporated. Once that's good and mixed, I'll pour the batter out into my waiting parchment lined nine by nine square inch pans. And usually people will separate these into two, but I like to live life on the edge. And I've been baking for years and I'm a little crazy. So I pour it all in at once. Go big or go home. So everything you saw here just now, just imagine it times two, cause we'll end up with two square cakes, which I'm gonna leave off to the side to cool completely. And then I'll actually put it in the freezer for a bit once it's done so that it starts to firm up just enough for me to slice them in half. Then I'll end up with four. Except on the second cake, I will be making the square smaller because I couldn't find a smaller square pan. And while those are chilling, we'll move on to the frosting. And I'm gonna be making buttercream today for three reasons. One, it works up super quickly. Two, it doesn't use a lot of ingredients. And three, it takes color really well. And since I'll need to add some green to the frosting after, it's gonna be perfect. So I've already got a combination of butter and shortening going away in my stand mixer here. And I'm gonna leave that until it's nice and creamy. And then I'm gonna be adding in two teaspoons of vanilla and then creaming it further. I just want it to be super smooth and fluffy and whisking it away so much adds a lot of air and this is just really what I go for when I'm making a buttercream. I'll also be making sure to stop the mixer every once in a while and scraping down the sides with a spatula because sometimes the whisk just doesn't get everything. Once I'm sure everything is nicely incorporated, I'm gonna slowly start adding powdered sugar. And I'm dumping straight from the bag here because I've made frosting so many times, but usually it will take at least four cups. And my suggestion is to do it slow. Take your time, make sure it all gets whisked in so you don't have large clumps of sugar, and also to avoid the poof cloud of sweetness. And as it begins to get thicker, you will want to add some sort of liquid. Some people like to add flavoring. I choose to use milk. And the amount that you add is really up to you because it depends on how thick you want your frosting to be, as well as what the humidity is like in the area you're cooking. But usually it's no more than two tablespoons. Just like before, I'm gonna continue to let this whisk away, slowly adding more speed to the stand mixer so that it will incorporate more air and make it light and fluffy. And Viola, we've got ourselves some beautiful white buttercream frosting. Now, if you notice that your buttercream is a beigey color and you would prefer it to be a much whiter color, there's two options that you have at this point, which would be to add a white color agent or to have skipped brown vanilla extract and opted for a clear, which I didn't do today, but I'm fine with this, so we're gonna move on. Now, I'm just gonna make sure that I have all of the buttercream from every last nook and cranny. You see what I did there? This isn't a TV show, folks. We're not letting anything go to waste 
dust, and I'm not afraid to scrape it all down, okay? I'm talking whisk, bowl, spatula, not a single dollop will go to waste. And once I'm sure I've got it all, I'll separate it so that half of the white is left untouched, while the remainder that's in the bowl will once again go through the stand mixer once I add just a small amount of green gel food coloring. And the reason I'm going with the gel food coloring, if you haven't used it before, is because if we used a liquid food coloring, it would thin out our buttercream. Now I'm just going to leave it in the stand mixer so that the color distributes all the way through the buttercream. And of course, I'll be stopping to scrape down the sides with a spatula to make sure everything's incorporated. And just like that, we have our two colors, white and green ready to decorate our cakes. But first, I'm gonna need a cake tray. And I did try to find a square one that was already covered at the store, but unfortunately, they only had rounds, so I'll need to make one myself. Basically, I've cut a small square size piece of foam board, then I'll mix white and black paint to make gray and paint the entire top and sides. Once that's dry, I'm gonna wrap the entire thing in cellophane and tape it on the bottom. Now I can wipe the top and let it dry, and it's ready for cake. So I'm going to start by adding just a small amount of frosting to the plastic, that way the first layer of cake doesn't move around. Then I'll add a layer of the white buttercream frosting, followed by another layer of cake. And now I'm going to repeat the process again, except this time I'm going to be filling the center with green frosting and then adding a third piece of cake on top. And this is going to be from the second cake that I made. Once again, I split it in two and this is going to finish off the bottom layer. So once this is on, I'll add green frosting to the top and then start making that overhang, just like we see in the Nintendo picture. Once I'm happy with this, we can stick in four straws directly around the center. That way the second layer of cake doesn't sink down into the first, creating a wobbly mess. And now we can fill and stack the second cake, which will be the same process as the first, except it's just a little bit smaller. And just like that, our cake is ready. So we'll put this off to the side and start on the next section. Cookies. In an effort to save time, I've already mixed up a batch of sugar cookie mix and it is ready to go. But I realized that it's kind of hot under my lights and my cake actually ended up going crooked, which you'll see later. So to make life easier, I'm gonna be switching to working in the kitchen where I can roll out my dough. And I wanna have this thick, but still thin because we don't want our cookies to be too gummy and we also don't want them to be so thin that they break or get too crunchy. Once the dough is ready, I'm just gonna place down these little templates that I made using images I found online and crop to a size I need. So that's gonna include a cedar tree, a ladder, which I actually ended up not using, and a little Nook Leaf logo. I'll gently remove those from the excess dough and then place them carefully using a spatula into a waiting cookie sheet or cake pan. Then of course, peel off the paper. I'm gonna set my oven to 350 and let these bake for eight to 10 minutes. Basically, as soon as you can smell them and they're lightly golden on the sides, they're good to go. Then we can take them out and let them cool while we move on to other cookie shapes. So I've collected all the excess dough, I'm rolling it out again and repeating the process. This time I'm gonna be cutting out a hardwood tree, which we'll add apples to later, and then of course transferring it to the pan. Then I'll collect the dough and roll it out again so I can make a little Nook Ink hard hat. And unfortunately, I realized just a little late that this is not the exact angle of the hat from the cake in the game, but it'll do. Next, I'm just cutting out another cedar tree. To be honest, I made a couple of each thing just in case I messed up. And lastly, I'll collect the remainder of the dough, form it into a little ball, cut it in half, and then shape it into little rocks. Then I'll put everything in the oven, let it bake again, and then let them cool. While we move on to making some icing to decorate. And I'm gonna be going with a confectioner's icing here, which is essentially royal icing minus the egg whites because I don't really like making it that way and I don't have pasteurized eggs available. So just find yourself a royal icing recipe you like and use that. Once my icing is ready, I'm just gonna separate it into a few different bowls. That way I'll be able to easily color them using gel food coloring, just like I did with the buttercream. And it is a little hard to see, but I ended up with white, light and dark green, light and dark brown, and red. And it did take a little bit of work to get the shades of green I was looking for, so in the end, this is a really cute cake, but not necessarily an exact match to the one in the game. Next, I'm just rolling up little parchment cones, stapling them together, and then filling them up with the different colors of icing. And you might notice in the footage that I've overfilled them as they spurt out of the top. Now all my cones are ready, and we can decorate. And I'm gonna start with my Nook Ink logo cookie, which was actually really fun to do, and I think it's my best piece. Unfortunately, I did it in green, like a crazy person, and I forgot that it's supposed to be brown until much later, so I will have to fix that. 
Next up, I did the little hard hat, and it doesn't look like it because I've added all the footage together, but in between layers, I did let these harden up a bit so that none of the colors would spread. And this is actually my second favorite piece. I was so proud of making that little logo in the center, like so proud. Next up, I have my apple tree. So it doesn't really look like it here, but I did use two different colors of brown to make it look more like it does in the game. And then same for the greens. I wanted it to look more alive and realistic. It doesn't really come off that way in the end, but I am happy with it. I used this little dotting technique with a knife and a spoon as the layers dried so that I could add different colors of green to make it look like leaves. I thought I was so clever. I wasn't. And then of course we need our apples. So I used the red icing to add three of them and then little brown stems. Next up, we have our cedar tree. This one didn't turn out exactly as I had hoped, but in the end, it is still pretty cute, except that I do have to perform some surgery, which you'll see later. So I started with the dark green so that I can make the different layers of the tree and then moved on to the bark, once again, using the two different browns. Then I came back, flooded the tree with a lighter green, and then as it set up over time, I kept coming back to add extra lines to make it look more real. And other than the fact that I went overboard, it actually looks really, really cool. Next up is the ladder, which I don't actually end up using because it looked like total garbage and thank goodness it was not the right ladder to even go with this cake. I'm only including the footage here because you need to see a ladder getting made and that's about it. And lastly, I'll fix up that first cookie I made because I realized it was supposed to be brown. And now my cookies are done. Next, we're gonna make our bushes, which are gonna go around the base of the cake. And to do this, I'm just taking some Timbits, which are essentially donut holes. All I'm gonna be doing is dipping these in a mixture of light and green candy melts. And then when I scooch them off the fork, I'm just filling the hole with more candy melts. In total, I can see 10 bushes around the cake. It goes two, three, two, three in an alternating pattern. So we have 10 Timbits here. Once these are all coated, I leave them to dry, and then I'm gonna come back and start spackling the tops and sides of all of them just to make them have some texture. And you're gonna see that I've done this at least two times and then left them off to the side completely while we moved on to our rocks. Next, I melted together some white and black candy melts and did the exact same thing with the little cookie rocks I made earlier. I'm just gonna dip them and then leave them off to the side to set up completely. And now back to the bushes, cause these guys need flowers. So I've got some red candy melts here and I'm gonna draw three four petal flowers on each one, allowing them time to set up before going in one last time and giving them all a yellow candy melt center. And that's it, I think all my decorations are ready. Next up, we're gonna be making the number one candle that's on top of the cake and that sounds ridiculous because it is. Believe it or not, I was not able to find a red number one candle anywhere in real life. All I could find was this red outlined number one on a white candle. So I, being the genius I am, thought, hey, I'll just buy some red birthday candles and melt them down and then fill in the white area because that seems so genius. We're gonna say that worked. Long story short, it didn't and I had a lot more foolish stuff behind the scenes which I've cut out, but we do now have a red candle and that's what matters. Next, we're gonna tackle the fruit that's all around the sides of the cake and the buttercream. And I didn't want to use real fruit because they are not all in season and I didn't have the patience to pipe them all out using candy melts. So what I'm actually doing is cutting some gummy candies in half. Starting with some fuzzy peaches, I'm going to be keeping the lighter orange section and then I'll be cutting some 3D gummy strawberries, apples, and pineapples. But I actually don't end up using the pineapples. I'm only keeping the footage there so that I can explain why they're there but not in the end product just so that you don't ask about it. <laughs> now that everything is ready, the cookies, the candies, the candle, my bush and rocks, it's time to start decorating. So I'm just adding the candies all around the bottom layer of buttercream on all four sides of both the bottom and top layers of cake. And at this point, you might have noticed that the cake is in fact sideways more so than the camera tilt and the buttercream looks a little saggy. And that is of course, because when I was downstairs, the studio lights were just messing with everything. So we're just gonna pretend that it's wonderful because I worked really hard. Once I'm done placing all the candies, we can move on to the bushes. Now, based on the picture, it looks like we've got three bushes in the bottom right corner of the cake, and then two in the bottom left with the apple tree in the middle. And then once we turn around, it will be the exact same. Three in the bottom right, and then two in the bottom left. At the front of the cake, just to the left side of the top tier, we're gonna place our little white hard hat, which is oh so cute. And then in the back at the base level, we'll add that ladder that I didn't make on camera. And now back at the front of the cake, I've realized that the cedar tree that was supposed to go on the right side of the top tier is too big. So I had to perform some surgery and chop off part of the trunk. But now it'll fit and um, we're just, that's the end of it, okay? <laughs> 
Uh, and now at a super wonky camera angle, you can see that I've placed my awesome number one candle and I'm just sticking two little rocks I made behind it and placing my little Nook sugar cookie. And that's it, my cake is ready. And a vision of perfection. Roll the glamour shots, there's not gonna be many. that's it for me and that's it for my one year anniversary Animal Crossing caking adventure. At the end of the day there are so many things that I would do differently. For example, maybe not starting the entire icing process in my basement because as I'm about to show you a lot is falling. <laughs> Gravity is not agreeing with my frosting. So I'm gonna quickly just pick this up and by quickly I mean very delicately. We're gonna show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. I don't even know how to end this video because I've never ended with cake before. I'm assuming I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> But anyways, here is the end result. And as you saw, or may have noticed, it's even more crooked than it was before. All of my frosting is drooping. It was very, very difficult to get any B-roll. I had to keep putting it in the fridge so it would stiffen up again, which made it look even weirder. Um, and my cedar tree is sort of just slouching off to the side there. But that really shouldn't affect the taste and that's what matters. But before I take a bite, because I'm gonna take a bite, I just want to address these super cute little egg holders here because if you were eyeing these puppies up thinking, dang, those are cute, then I just want to let you know that I found these for free from PlayNintendo.com and I'm actually really upset because they have a lot of really great stuff there and I didn't know it existed before today. Like there's birthday printables, the VR Mario Kart, or AR Mario Kart, the new one. They have like finish lines and blockades and stuff that you could print out and use as part of your play. There's also Christmas tags, Christmas cards, these super cute little Easter egg holders, and so much more. Games, crossword puzzles, you name it, it's there. Actually, don't name everything because I only saw a few things, but either way, I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description because this is actually from Nintendo, and they give us a whole bunch of super cool, really high quality free printables, like the little egg cups you see here. But before I put these on the cake, I did add a layer of tape to both sides and then cut it out and assembled them because as I learned with my templates for the cookies, the paper definitely just soaks up any and all fat or oils and we didn't want that. But they are really, really cute and this is actually crazy heavy so I'm just gonna put it down. I just wanted to make sure you had a visual for those little Animal Crossing printables so that I wasn't just looking at you like this. Actually, I don't know why I put it down since I'm gonna need to take a bite of it. But I guess now is as good a time as any to say goodbye just in case my mouth is full in a minute. We don't wanna be rude. So, if you know somebody who would enjoy today's video because they like cake, they like Animal Crossing, or maybe they just want to watch frosting slowly melt down towards the ground, then please share this video with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like, or how long you have been playing Animal Crossing. Like, are you super stoked for all the great new stuff that we got? Because I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and that's it. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. But first, I gotta take a bite. Oh, I forgot a fork. Ah, fork. Wait, no I didn't, where'd my fork go? Oh my gosh. I had a fork. Hold on. I'm most excited for the little bushes because I know they're delicious. I guess I could have made cake pops too, but that would have taken forever. But anyways, here we go. It's a lot of frosting. Mmm. Tastes like cavities. <laughs> It's really good though. Oh yeah, super good. <laughs> I should probably have taken photos first, right? Don't mind me guys, I'm just eating my Animal Crossing cake. And now a little bush. <laughs> Dang, that's really good. And now I gotta share it with my kids and husband. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that whole process and now it's time to say farewell. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, and happy one year anniversary to Animal Crossing.